the meeting to order at 6.04. Can I be calling you? Number one. Can you hear me? Do we have any adjustments to the agenda? All right, um, hearing none, we'll, um, we'll skip the sign times and timekeeper. We'll just try and keep things quick. And move on to the consent agenda. Approving the minutes of Tuesday, March 15th. I'd make a motion to approve the minutes of Tuesday, March 15th, 2022. I'll second. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> aye. Minutes are approved. Um, do we have any public comments at this time? Hello, it's Bridget. Hi, Bridget. Did Go you ahead. hear me? Okay, Bridget Taylor, South Royalton. Um, I'm having technical difficulties, sorry. Um, I just wanted to make a public comment uh, commending the high school students on their presentation of Mamma Mia, uh, which was um, the uh, second musical since the pandemic and the first one which really um, was able to be back in the gym, and um, it was really nice to see. It was nice to see a full house for two nights. I think it's evidence that, as in the past, we could easily do three nights. Um, I want to underline, as I have since before the consolidation, that these performing arts opportunities are more than just a chance for our children to show off what they can do, though that is spectacular. They, they are also recruitment activities for other students. They instill pride in the community and the community connections, which Bethel and Royalton both voted for when they voted for this consolidation. Um, and I was really glad to see us not hiding our lights under a bushel. Uh, it was wonderful to see promotion for that and for the uh, Music and Art uh, Festival on Facebook. Um, it was nice to see it up on the uh, bulletin boards for both schools, uh, which had not happened always in the past. And I really hope that that trend continues. There is no reason we shouldn't be just as proud of our performing arts kids, which are often the same as our sports kids anyway, um, and our academic kids and all the things they do. Um, and I really, it was really nice to see us uh, really encouraging that, and um, I would love next time to 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 really see more of the school administration driving the bus on recognizing those kids and shouting out those kids and really giving them the attention and praise they deserve. It was just wonderful to see um, these last two performances really get a lot of um, light and heat, so to speak, in in a really good way. So thank you. Thanks, Bridget. Is there any other public comment? Okay, well, we'll move into um, board comments. Any board comments at this time? All right, um, the celebration of learning. What do we have this, this month? There's nothing this month because of school break. Uh, we attentively planned on pathways, um, but I didn't want to bring teachers in over break um, to do that. And I think that should happen in person. So a plug for the board that, that we do plan on having a pathways and personalized learning presentation next month. Um, and that will in also incorporate our community schools grant so that folks can see the alignment middle through high school around what we're doing in pathways, community based learning and the community schools grant. Um, and so you'll have a presentation on that next month. Um, well, in that case, uh, we'll move on to the superintendent's report. Uh, so uh, good evening. You have my report in hand. Um, there's gonna be a community letter coming out on Friday um, to just give a bunch of updates about, about what's going on across the SU. Um, and also my plan is to update on COVID numbers across the SU that we've been able to track. Of course, not everything's always reported to us, but what we do know, I will report out on Friday and I'll get the habit of incorporating that into my bi-weekly letters. 
Um, so that is forthcoming. The um, other thing I just wanted to highlight is some of the what's occurring in the legislature in Montpelier. So some of the bills that I'm keeping a close eye on is um, one, universal school meals. We're following that one closely. We expect that that's going to be passed for a one year extension um, of universal school meals that will use some of the ed fund surplus to cover that cost. Um, there's been disagreement um, in regards to how to fund that permanently. Um, and so I am pleased to know that Montpelier is not going to take action on universal meals without trying to solve how we fund that. Um, as you know, in the past, sometimes things get passed and then it gets turned on to the local districts to figure out how to fund it. Um, and it seems like they're gonna try to address this one in Montpelier. Um, but I do expect there's a lot of uh, momentum on universal meals that that will be funded for next year. Um, the other thing that we're following closely, of course, is the uh, weight study around equalized pupils. Um, and so either there's two proposals I've been talking about. One is more of a, a block grant where certain pupils would equate to the district receiving a certain sum of money. Uh, they're weighted. The other one is the weighting study weights equalize pupils differently. So it takes your average daily membership and assigns different values to that average daily membership, whether a student qualifies for ESL, whether uh, the student, student would be qualified as free and reduced lunch, whether the student attends a high school. High school students would count. Um, and middle school students would actually get a higher value than they have in the past in the weighting study. For us, uh, in White River Unified District, either way, it actually results in a decrease um, in taxes. So it's good news. Um, this is to provide further equity is the concept across the state, um, which Act 60 had originally set out for. And so I do expect some movement on that bill. I think that it could change at the 11th hour. Um, and so there's going to be what I believe is a lot of action here in the next three weeks um, around uh, negotiations in Montpelier. And that will be one of what I expect negotiations on. Also, special ed funding will take effect, the block grant. Um, this coming July 1st, there was a push to delay that. My, the, my understanding is that there's been real good momentum now not to delay, so there won't be any action there. Um, there will be uh, action taken to just change how we qualify students um, around some specific learning disabilities that will be phased in the following year. Uh, but financially, the way we budget, we budget at the SU level for this block grant to take effect, um, and it does look like it's going to. Um, Tara put in her report, there's been an adjustment to the yield based on the house an adjustment in a positive way for White River Unified District based on the budget that they passed. Um, Tara can talk to you more in her report about that, what that did, but it will decrease taxes a little more. Um, and the other legislative um, action that we're following is just the miscellaneous ed bill. That sometimes things can slip into that at the last minute, so we're following that closely as well. And I'll give the full board an update on all that on a Monday night as well, if how things play out over the next upcoming days. The other uh, thing I just want to put in a plug is the full board on Monday night, we will be back and doing our um, board development series. Um, and in the focus this coming Monday is on board protocols and process. Um, and so if you can attend, uh, we will videotape it and push it out. I highly encourage all board members to attend. It's at the start of the meeting. It'll be about 40 minutes. Um, and uh, the last thing is uh, board chairs will be joining me over the next four upcoming Mondays for the required by statute board and superintendent annual training. Go ahead, Shannon. I, I'm sure this will come up in the principal's report, but on Monday, at least, I will be attending the We Are Wildcats celebration at the high school, so I'm glad that's being recorded because 
I'll be down guys. But. Yes, and that was, yes, Shannon, thank you. That was on, that was the first thing I was gonna highlight, but I'm sure the principals will too. I just was also meeting with incoming um, Principal Thomas. I meet with him on Tuesday afternoons at four. Um, and um, I know there's a lot of excitement. Principal McCracken and I joined students for lunch in um, the fax room on Thursday that students put on. And uh, there was a lot of buzz around uh, this work and students have taken a huge leadership role in the planning of this night, uh, which is really exciting in teachers. So, and I've actually had some folks reach out to me from other districts saying that they do plan to attend. So that, that's really exciting news. And we opened it up for our students as well, of course, meaning Rudd students. All right, are there any other questions for Jamie? All right, thanks, Jamie. Uh, we'll move on to the uh, principal's report. Well, good evening. Good to see all of you virtually tonight. Uh, one of our, our big uh, pushes in the coming months uh, will be taking this successful student-led conference model being used at the middle school and figuring out what that looks like for our fourth and fifth graders, uh, as well as for our high school students. Uh, so we began uh, looking at the middle school model and some other models for high school uh, at our last large leadership meeting. And we'll be continuing that work in the months to come so that uh, when we come back to school in the fall, we'll, we'll have a different look to our conferences. Hi, everybody. I'll just also add that uh, Mr. Bradley's not here tonight. So I, I know you've gotten the report. You can you can all read. Uh, but I would just add um, to, to goal one, I should, should have added it earlier, that our student support team is going to be attending not virtually in person, which is super exciting, uh, the PBS coordinators and networking and learning series, May 9th. So that's exciting um, to continue our, our work there. I think uh, the other few things I would highlight um, for myself is just the really wonderful Tyco came to the Bethel campus and the elementary was able to benefit from that. Uh, they were really coming for the middle school, but they had some open windows of time. So that was wonderful. Uh, and the other thing that didn't make it into the report that should be highlighted is um, the small, really very altruistic group of kiddos uh, on the Royalton campus who have been uh, doing a lot of work to raise money for the Ukraine. So um, really proud of them. And I just want to share that they, they're raising so much money, it's making their classroom teacher nervous. So that's a good thing. <laughs> it, Go ahead. It, it, as, as Bridget noted, uh, many of our pre-pandemic in-person community activities have resumed uh, with the concert and musical last month. Um, we're going on field trips again, which is super exciting. Uh, we're having morning meetings together in the gym by class again, uh, which gives uh, school and our community a whole different feel. So really looking forward to the, the last eight weeks of school coming up after a break. Any questions about anything that's happening? We, we will talk more about uh, our second goal uh, proficiencies and flexible pathways and personalized learning more in the presentation next at the next board meeting. All right, thanks guys. Um, I think we're on to Tara. Good evening, everyone. You have my report, which outlines all of our due dates for the month of April. A um, couple quick things on that. Our pre-audit is scheduled for the week of May 9th, and then the actual audit will occur the week of September 19th. So we're still on target as we were in FY21. And then as Jamie mentioned in his report, uh, back at the end of March, the House passed Bill H737, which increases the yield to $13,742. Parker, can you put up the tax sheet, please? Sorry. 
so with this new adjusted yield, if it also passes the rest of the chambers, it will result in a reduction of the tax rate in Bethel of 8.33 cents and in Royalton 16.6 cents. It also reduced the resident non-residential rate to 1.4490. What was presented in your budget and in your mailer was a decrease of 2.2 cents in Bethel and 10.35 cents in Royalton with a non-residential tax rate of 1.4820, which again was based on the December 1st letter that we received from the tax department. So those are my updates tonight, if there's any questions. That's, that's great news, thanks Tara. <clears throat> Yes, thank you, Tara, for always bringing lovely news to the board, <laughs> at least this year. All right, um, do we have a policy committee update? Ronnie, you want to take that one? Or do you want me to go? Well, why don't you go ahead, Jamie? Okay. So Ronnie's on the policy committee, and Ronnie, thanks for attending. He's been a, a valued new member. We've got two policies we're working on currently right now. One will affect you as someone who receives tuition students to assist us, but it's, it's really to tighten up our residency, residency verification for payment of tuition students. Um, uh, this started out of Granville Hancock, where we have completely uh, school tuition, like totally tuition out everyone. And so we looked around to see what other boards have done that are, are tuition sending towns around having clear and policy the steps we take if there's a question around um, residency. And so what we have is a draft that I do expect to be adopted by the Granville Hancock board that they brought to the full SU board policy committee who has interest in it being that five out of our six districts um, do have uh, school choice. Um, and for some of those districts, that's a new process, like in Chelsea and Rochester. Um, and so it, it does incorporate an affidavit process around it initially um, that gives us a lot more details around their residency. And it really is, it, it, it makes certain that we don't get in a situation where folks may have second homes. And especially now with COVID, we know a lot of folks um, did possibly move into state. Um, and then looking for tuition, but may not actually be legal residents um, of that town. And so it spells that process out. And then the other one is uh, we've got a draft of a social media policy that we're looking to adopt that mostly focuses on personnel and the use of social media by personnel. Um, and so that is going to be on its second reading by the policy committee next month. And the full board should expect to see drafts of these policies next month um, to give some feedback as well. They'll be at the May full board meeting and then in all the local district boards in June too for a reading. So those are the two policies that we currently have underway. Um, and like I said, they're in, a, they're in, the one is in like draft three, the social media policy, this will be draft two of it. Um, and it's a policy that had been drafted prior to COVID and then got um, put on the sidelines while we were addressing COVID. But I think it's a really important policy that we get back in place um, prior to the start of next school year um, is my optimistic view on it, just so that we have it as it can be part of a new teacher orientation and things of that nature. All right, thanks. Um, any questions about the policy committee? Okay, um, we'll move on to the Supervisor Union Board update. Talking about you wanna hit this one, Andrew? Um, no, why don't you go ahead? <laughs> Forget all this. the stuff. the uh, so the the SU board um, has been looking at how can we create a meeting schedule that um, results in productive meetings, but also results in um, 
sustainability, specifically for the superintendent, but also I would say for our business manager and other SU staff. And so in February, we had 20 meetings. Now that's a heavy month, but in general, we're averaging three and a half meetings a week. Um, and so what we're looking to do is create at least a regular meeting schedule that could result in one night out a week and then allow another night a week for committees. Um, and what we've been having is, is often I've been having to even cancel committees because we've had two or three meetings scheduled on the same night. Um, last Thursday was an example of that. There was, there was a superintendent evaluation committee, um, energy committee, and I had a special meeting at Stratford. So we had to cancel the energy committee. Um, and so this new proposal would look at um, having districts um, team up and one district would start at 5.30, another district would start at 6.30. We would warn um, virtually and at a meeting location. So Rochester, Stockbridge, Granville, and Hancock would be an example of two districts that would meet on the first Tuesday of the month. One of them would start at 5.30. We would plan the agenda such that the work that needed SU office staff support would be at the front end of their agenda. And then that would allow the SU office to then turn over to the, another, the other meeting that starts at 6.30. And meanwhile, that first board that started could continue to do work that they have that's board work um, past needing central office administration. And the, you know, my thought process around this is that it would work well for August, September. Once we start to get in budget season, I think that we may see that we need to break back off until we get out of budget season. And then we could, um, again, start it after um, budgets pass. And Granville Hancock's on a different budget schedule than the other districts um, and the other four. So I actually, it would still limit um, some meetings even when we break out. And so there seems to be good feedback in most districts around this. The thought process is that White River Unified District would partner with Sharon, just so you know, um, is currently what's been proposed. And Sharon tends to start early anyways. They start at 5.30. So um, if, it, if it does work out, this is on the agenda again at the full board, then I think the thought process would be, and I know Peggy, you had asked for later meeting starts as well, and Andrew had indicated that might work well for him um, at reorg. So it may be that Sharon starts at 5.30 and, and this board was started like 6.30. Um, so that's the thought process behind it. And, you know, I think one of the goals for me is to make certain that, you know, we get our house in order. So at some point when I do move on to a different um, position, which I'm, I'm, that's not in the foreseeable future, but I want this to be a desirable and sustainable job. Um, and, you know, we, our competition in general up the 89 corridor are one district supervisory unions, at most two. And so I do think if we can put some structures in place to um, make certain whatever incoming superintendent was to come in after me, that they're not out three or four nights a week, I think it would behoove the board to look into that just so they can market themselves even better. So does anybody have any uh, thoughts or questions about the future board schedule, meeting schedule? I would just say I'm, I'm, I agree that we need to make the uh, superintendent's job more manageable and appreciate Jamie, um, everything that he does already, but um, that this is just the start. We're still looking for other ways to um, creatively um, slim that down a little bit so, so that he's not at three and four meetings a day, three or four nights a week. So, um, but thank you for all your work. Thanks, Shane. All right. Well, we'll look forward to starting that in August. Um, okay. So we're going to move on to our discussion items, uh, interviewing uh, candidates for the vacant board positions. Um, I guess why don't we start with uh, Royalton? John, we received your letter. Would you like to? Uh, yes, thank you. 
Well, I think uh, most of you folks know me, uh, may know me from my previous work together. Uh, I did uh, have a spell of nine years on the then South Royalton School Board and actually started some discussions with our friends up in Bethel about joining uh, while I was in my early terms. And sadly, we didn't finish it then. And it would have saved a, a lot of headaches that uh, we went through uh, in the second round. And I think everybody is aware that I was involved in the revote efforts to uh, uh, create the consolidated uh, school um, district that we now have. And I look forward to an opportunity to uh, continue to uh, bring service to the both communities. Um, and on the board and uh, you know take on that role again and I think I have a lot to offer what I will tell you is I, I don't come in with some type of agenda of, oh god I have to fix a bunch of problems or something I think that things are uh, have been going along very well not without some challenges here and there and uh, I look forward to uh, helping with some of those challenges but we've had some great success you've had some great successes too and um and i you know look forward to building on that and i understand we have a change in principalship uh with the high school uh with our consolidated high school uh and i'm looking forward to uh being part of those discussions as well so uh that's what i would have to offer anybody who has any questions i'd be more than happy to answer them does anybody have any questions for john All right. Um, thanks, John. Um, so let's go to the Bethel position. Chris, would you like to? Yeah. Uh, so for anybody that doesn't know me, I'm Chris Jarvis. I lived in Bethel for 16 years. Um, I, I uh, moved to this area here to take a management position at a large company, um, which I'm still in. So I have a lot of uh, dealings with people and, and budgets and, and everything else on a day to day basis. I have two daughters that are in middle school, um, my two youngest, the oldest one graduated uh, a couple years ago. Um, I'm very active in the community. Um, if it's not school or town, it's something else. Um, and, and I got on the select board uh, about seven years ago and mainly it was just kind of, uh, you know, the town needed some support. Um, and, uh, you know, so I got on that town, on the town select board to you know look into budgets and stabilize our budgets and look at futuristic uh, ideas and things for the town um, so I've been serving in that capacity since then um, you know kind of why to get on the board I mean I just I've always believed that you know it's everybody's civic duty to play a part in the role of um, either committees or boards uh, throughout our community um, especially when they're in need um, I, I do bring, uh, you know, pretty extensive budget awareness to, to it, um, you know, seeing accurate, responsible budgets be put together, as well as, you know, try to eliminate the peaks and valleys of our budget process and try to keep things steady, um, tax rates and things like that. And, and, you know, we always can improve no matter, you know, what, what we do in life. And same thing with the school and when it comes down to the three A's, academics, arts and athletics, um, I mean, there's always always ways to improve our school system. Um, and, and just like the other gentleman just mentioned, you know, we have had some challenges in and around the communities the last couple of years with, you know, some new principals and things like that. So, you know, coming on board to help stabilize um, the community. Um, uh, during the election, <clears throat> I ran on a, uh, a write-in ballot uh, vote during election time. And when the unified district was put together, they encompassed the they encompass the um, the voter list for both towns. So even though I'm, I'm a Bethel or, or was going for the Bethel uh, board position, uh, when they figure on the uh, formal um, minority vote that you need to get, um, it didn't qualify. So if th the way things used to be, you know, if I was just in Bethel and Bethel voters were voting, then I had enough votes to be on the board. Uh, in this case, because they take the two together, then I fell short. Um, even though it's interesting that a majority of voters, when they go to the polls, 
you know, the Royalton voters don't vote for the Bethel voters and the Bethel voters don't vote for the Royalton ones. They usually leave them blank when we're counting votes at night, but, but it's, you know, this is yeah, the way the charter was driven, driven up, so. Um, so, you know, obviously I uh, wanted to, uh, it wasn't just a writing campaign, the writing campaign, it was, uh, you know, I'm serious about the position, so that's why I'm here this evening. All right, thanks. Does anybody have any uh, questions for Chris? Okay, um, well, we have one candidate for each position. Do people feel like we need to do an executive session for this or? Uh, I'd yes. like to go into executive session. Okay. We have a second. Can you just uh, define by, for personnel? Uh, yes, I'd like to go into executive session for personnel yeah. and invite uh, Jamie as well. Okay. I'll second it. Right. Let me kick John out of the room here. <clears throat> Will you do a, um, yep. Uh, so just the current board members yep. and you? Yep. All right, cool. That's easy enough. Bye bye. Mm -hmm. you gotta go. no. All right, we're coming out of executive session at 6.42. Um, so we're ready to appoint members. Uh, I guess I'm waiting for a motion. Can I have a motion for appointing? Go ahead and make the motion to appoint John Olmstead uh, to the position of Royalton uh, School Board Member and Chris Jarvis to the position of Bethel School Board Member. I will second that motion. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 I'm going to abstain from the vote. Okay. I'll vote aye. Okay, so we, we I, I just uh, just a second. The... No, Andrew. What? Um, I apologize, Shannon. I and I should have mentioned this. Um, you can't abstain because you're a board of six, and we need a. So full, we need all four. Yes, to take action. All right, then I revise my vote to a nine. Okay. All right. Um, welcome to the board, Chris and John. I will let John know he's downstairs bowling with the boys at this point. <laughs> and uh, Shannon, it just uh, and Chris is here, but let John know that um, I'll email them tomorrow. Um, yes. And as soon as they get sworn in, we'll get them set up with uh, emails. School emails is how yes. we should do business. And I'll set up. I'll send them some documents and set up times to connect with them. Okay. Thank you. Um. So the next order of business is um, to see, uh, Chris, do you have interest in joining any of the subcommittees that we have? So we have facilities um, to look at maintenance um, issues, and there's the finance committee for looking at budget and things like that. Um, do you have interest in either of those? Is there one or the other that's uh, in more need than the other? Or? I mean, I probably could serve in that capacity on either one of them, so I guess. Probably the finance committee, or not the finance, the uh, facilities committee. Is, uh, I was kind of taking that one on, but, um, you know, that was one that people vacated that um, would be, I would appreciate somebody taking on, so. Or, yeah, I can handle that. Okay. Um, do you know if John, is he coming back or is he uh he's not coming back at the moment um and uh but we can discuss uh subcommittees at the next meeting okay um but i would hope andrew that you don't come off the finance <laughs> no no i'm gonna stay on the finance. <laughs> um yeah tara was there did we did you touch base with 
the other members of the finance committee to see if they wanted to stay on? I have not heard back from our two community members since the email, Andrew, but I know when we did discuss it, I believe it was two meetings ago, Reed, correct me if I'm wrong, or Peggy, that Louise did indicate that she was interested on to stay on and Robert wasn't at our last meeting. So I don't know his thoughts on it. All right, well, I guess we'll keep the current conversation. Yeah, I'm still willing to stay. Right. Great. Thanks, Thank buddy. you. Okay. Um, I guess the next discussion or action, potential action item would be the, or discussion item is the, no, this is an action item, whatever. Ground maintenance contract. So I will take the lead on this one. Uh, we went out to bid for the spring mowing of the grounds and the fields. We received one bid back and the bid came from the current provider, which is Green Mountain Mowing LLC. I have submitted a bid waiver request to the Agency of Education, but I do not have approval on it yet. So if you would like to proceed, you can make a motion to accept this bid uh, pending approval from the AOE on the bid waiver. And Jacob's proposal was for South Royalton campus, $25,300 for the year, and the Bethel campus, $22,450 for the year. The FY22 contract that he did for us was $23,450 for Royalton and $21,450 for Bethel. So a very small increase on his contract pricing. All right, that seemed reasonable, especially given gas prices and everything else. Um, is there any discussion on, on the maintenance contract? Grounds and maintenance, whatever it is. I want to suggest uh, maybe next fall when we go out for our plow bid that I think that Jacob would be willing to uh, negotiate on combining those two contracts into something that's more favorable. And as he's shown to be really the only one interested in bidding on uh, our contracts, it might make sense to, to go to a longer term uh, contract so we're not doing this uh, twice a year. Okay, that sounds sounds good to me. Um, any other comments on the contract? Do I have a motion? The motion would be to approve pending of the waiver from the Agency of Education. I was going to ask Tara, is there a specific language we need in this motion? I'm going to type it in the chat. Thank you. All right, so I would make a motion to accept the bid from Green Mountain Mowing LLC for the spring summer maintenance pending approval from the Agency of Education on the bid waiver. Thank you, Tara. I will second the motion. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Um, Chris, were you voting on, or I guess we need to wait for you to be signed oh, yeah, in. Yeah. <laughs> okay, next, next. Okay, that passes. Okay, what's next? Um, now we'll move on to the discussion about extending uh, next steps and extending childcare and programming for summer and school vacations. Yeah, so this um, was added to the agenda. Um, 
last month and I put it in my report. My, um, my recommendation to address this is much like how we addressed, you know, being able to add pre-K and address our marketing efforts, which I think we've been fairly successful. Um, we were able to add a fourth pre-K for next year through the budget process and based on the recommendation of that task force. And I do think we're doing a better job marketing. I think we still have way, uh, room to grow, but I do think we are being gain, gaining traction. And so I think that this is a concern in this district, um, specifically because we have limited childcare options. I think it's a concern across the SU as well, but I think there could be some things that we can learn from what happens here um, in this district. And the other thing that's currently happening is that Carrie McDonald, who has been our One Planet um, coordinator for a long time, has indicated that she is looking to move on at the end of this year. Um, and so we're currently in the process of trying to find a replacement for her. Um, Carrie's been with us 16 years. And so we're also going to be transitioning in a new 21st century coordinator. Um, and as you know, we just brought in a new assistant coordinator last year. Um, can, cause, because Bill Bonson, you are moved out of town. Um, and he was our assistant director. So we've been a little bit in flux here with One Planet. Um, so I think there's an opportunity though with new leadership coming on board um, to get them involved in this task force. Um, and so I think it makes sense to have a task force created that includes um, certainly uh, uh, community members, right, and parents from both towns that we would look to uh, get volunteers to join. Um, in addition to, I would say that we should definitely have board member present um, I think that that Principal Bowen should be present. And then I'm also going to encourage that both our, both our building-based coordinators for One Planet at Bethel and Royalton are involved in this task force, uh, along with um, whoever we bring on as the new One Planet um, director. Um, and then, you know, what I think the task force would do is, you know, they're going to need to set out to say what other community um, stakeholders do we want to get involved to tackle this concern? And I also get to remind the board that we do have a significant community schools grant that we received for the tune of 750,000. And I think when we think about this project, to me, it's at the heart of community school, right? This is a need of the community that we need to solve in tandem with our school because childcare is um, affecting our community. Uh, and I would say communities, but certainly this White River Unified District community. And so I wonder, is there an opportunity there too to look at partnering um, with some of the folks that we have as stakeholders within that grant, at least in the Bethel community, and look to extend that work across into Royalton to try to solve this problem. Um, I think the collective genius is certainly greater than the few. Um, and I think that, you know, forming a comprehensive task force that has multiple stakeholders um, involved in it uh, could be a way that we solve this problem. Because I don't think just the school is going to solve the problem, frankly. I think it's going to have to be a partnership. And I think that that's why leveraging that community schools grant, when you look into the community schools work that, that Montpelier was looking to have, it was to tackle these type of systemic issues within school within communities and saying how do you partner community with school to do that work uh, shannon I'd, I'd like to add to that you know i think one of the main stakeholders and i know there was a lot of um interest in working with us in the past would be magic mountain daycare center um and i'm not sure what the interest is now um Certainly, I haven't had a kiddo there now for four years, but um, they still now have a wait list. And I know in the past, their interest was in letting us really take off more with our preschool program because and 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 so I, I'd like us to look not only at at um, our school aged kids, but what are we doing for those kiddos who are three and four who have no care um, when they're on breaks who still don't have care in the summer who end up flooding that magic mountain system um if 
possible. So I, I'd, I'd like to make sure that that is a group that's not forgotten. Um, and if we can work with Magic Mountain so that we're taking more care of our older kids and they can open up more spots for, for small infants and toddlers, then that's a real win for our communities. Um, so I just wanted to point that out. Okay. Yeah, the task force idea sounds like a good, good one to me. Um, and all the things that you said sounded good. What I'd be a little bit concerned about is just the time frame. Like we should make sure that we're targeting, like is the idea to have, try and get something in place for this particular summer? Or, you know, if, if we have a large task force that has many meetings that might make it difficult. So, you know, if we're gonna go for the task force, I think we should make sure we have a, a focused end goal for when they're going to report and why not. You know, my answer to that, Andrew, is like, if you directed me to run a program all summer right now, I don't know if I could do it, would be my answer. What to was that? If you directed me to run summer programming right now, all summer, I don't know if I would have the staff to do it. And so I really think we need some creative thinking with more, more heads to help solve this problem. I, I would tell you that if I knew how to just extend summer programming all summer right now, I would do it, but I don't know how to do it because I don't know how to get the staffing in place. And so I, that's what I'm saying. I think we need to look to our community partners to help us solve that problem. If it was as simple as just me having the workforce, like we have the budget, right? We have funds to do this. That's not the problem for me right now. It's that with child licensing and those requirements, I don't have the able bodies that are willing to do it. And so what I, what I need is, is help around how do we think differently about it so that it, it can be really successful and sustainable. Um, and so I think that the task force, the first thing for them to do is say, what's the need? And then what are the priorities? And then how do we start thinking outside the box to address them? Right, or I, I think you could have like a what is possible this summer, and then what are we going to do long term? As which is sort of what the pre K group did, right? But you know, the, the truth is, like, one planet may be run by me this summer in Onda if we don't find a director, right? And so, I just think the reality is, like, we, we don't have a ton of uh, I'm a horse guy, like horses in the barn right now to staff these things. So I think that's where we got to call on community to help us. And I think we need to like get a grassroots effort around like this is a need. And I, I think also if we want to attract young families, like we have to have a answer that's yes, short term, but also long term. Um, and so, you know, I, I really do feel like that this is an opportune time, especially with that community schools grant to really dig into some of this work. Um, and so that's, that's sort of my reasoning around the task force so that it also, it doesn't result in like watered down um, childcare that, that folks aren't happy with as well. Uh, go ahead, Karen. Um, I guess, can I talk right now? I didn't know if I was supposed to do it during the public forum or if I could do it now. Um, I think you can go but, ahead. Then. Okay. Um, I'm so glad that we're talking about this. I really appreciate it. Um, I have started a petition and I'm hoping that that's started a lot of conversation in the community. I think a lot of people have been talking about it now. Um, I'd be happy to be a part of that committee. I'd be actually excited to be a part of that committee as the parent voice um, because it's it's so needed. Um, I have been talking with the family place um, and they said they would be happy to be part of, you know, come to a committee, talk to us about how the grants work, how to, you know, how other communities are doing it, how they're operating, how they're making it work, how they work with rec departments and other community members. Um, so that's a resource I think that we could tap into. Um, but anyway, I can help. I'm happy to, happy to do it. I have started a petition. There's a need. People are supporting it. This is wanted 
And I totally uh, appreciate everything, Jamie. I get it. It's not going to start tomorrow, but I do feel like we need to get these this committee up and running like ASAP. Thanks, Karen. And yeah, I agree. And Family Place is a great resource. I just wrote that down. Um, so, what as a board would we need to do to set up a task force? Or does why don't does anybody else from the board want to say anything about what we should do here? Do, is there consensus that we should set up a task force? Yeah, I mean, I, I would say it, it, there's definitely a need for the, the child care. It's it's something that's thought on a lot of people's minds, and uh, we definitely need to do something and whatever it takes to get it done. All right. Do you need us to actually set up the task force? Or yeah, I, I think it's good uh, for you to move that we form a task force. Um, that and then I, if you had a board member I'd, I'd, that interested, I'd like to have you appoint them to serve it. And then this would be a standing agenda item until the task force like really delivers their report. And I think that they should be reporting out monthly. And you know, my thought process around the task force is like, I want to be all inclusive, like any and all folks that are interested in pursuing this, I want to invite them to these meetings. There'll be, you know, We'll certainly uh, publicize it. We'll reach out um, through our school newsletter to gather interest, but we'll also like do what Karen just said, like the family place, invite them to the table. Um, and so, you know, I, like I said, I've already identified some key components within the administration around our um, site coordinators at both Bethel and Royalton, our elementary principal, and um, our incoming one planet coordinator um, in regards to addressing, making certain that the school is um, there working um, diligently to, with the task force to address concerns as they're coming up. And again, I think it's prioritizing what's the need and what's the short term fixes that we can put in place. But in general, I really hope that the task force continues to meet till we come recreate like a long-term proposal and plan um, to address this in general. Okay, um, I guess Karen, if you want to say one more thing. Um, could we, in the meantime, start, I mean, I would love to start hearing what people need. Like, is that something we could start surveying in the meantime while we're getting a committee together? So we kind of know what we're working with once the committee's together, like, what are people looking for? What do they need for care? What do they need for support? You know, what does that look like? Is that yeah, something? Karen, my, my thought process would be that we'd start having that committee meet in the next two weeks. And okay. that probably the first order of business would be that to generate that survey. Okay. I'd also comment that this is not, unfortunately, the first time this has come up at the board. We've been talking about this. We've talked about this over snow days. We talk about this over, you know, what what is it that, that is tough for parents. So there's a lot of knowledge at the board if there haven't been a lot of solutions. So Karen, you're not alone. Um, and and it's not, you know, the first time we've unfortunately thought about this. So we'll yeah. put our heads together. I just think our resources have even decreased even yes. since the pandemic. Since yeah, I agree. Yeah. It's always good to have, you know, parents come and, mm -hmm. and really push for things because, you know, that's how Things I'll keep coming. <laughs> Squeaky wheels. I this has been the most stressful school year ever. Like, yeah, I'll keep coming. We need <laughs> child care. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I'd entertain a motion to start a task force to address child care, um, extending child care programming for summer and school vacations. So moved. All set. All right, all in favor. Say aye. 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 Okay. Um, is there anybody who is particularly interested in joining the task force from the board as a board representative? I 
really would like to. Um, I'm, I'm going to put my hat out there because I think it's so important. I'm already on one task force, so it's a little bit of a stretch, but this is super important. And I've been probably the one most angrily yelling for something for a long time when I was trying to get down to my job and snow days were preventing that. So I'll, uh, I'll take this one on. Great. Um, Shannon, you must be happy that I'm a stickler about calling snow days. Jamie, do you have any, remember last time you were like, I'm gonna go call that snow day. And I'm like, if you do, I am sending my eight-year-old up to your house. Do you have any idea when I got the email 10 minutes later, how cursed your name was in my house that night? All the rest of the people on the board were like, oh yeah, we're so excited. I'm like, oh God, D <laughs> I did not have time for him to be here all day while I work. The rest of the time, we adore you, Jamie, but when you call snow days, you're not my favorite person. Only one this year. Mm. It's a good thing we didn't have school today, right? That's true. Today we was rough. Be there. Um, okay, well, uh, go ahead, Peggy. Okay, I was just going to make a quick comment before my battery runs out. Um, there are really two extremes here. One extreme is that as parents, you are responsible for your children. The other extreme is as a society, we are responsible for the children. And I think when we go to town meeting and look at budgets, et cetera, we're gonna be hit with both of those extremes and we need a task force that can help work all of that out. I also, I agree, Peggy. I also think there are very financially sustainable ways to go about some of this um, and I'll be looking for those, but there are ways to make this work and not drop it in the laps of the taxpayers too. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. the families that are hurting are pretty used to paying a dang pretty penny for childcare. Yeah, I think, I think that's, you know, this doesn't have to be like a free, everybody can send their kids. It's figuring out how we can at least have an option for parents. But thank you. Yeah, I'd be happy to pay. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people would be happy to pay. Okay. Um, well, we look forward to hearing from the task force next month that are about what, what they've been up to. So glad we're getting that started and um, thank you, Shannon, for volunteering to be part of that. Thank you, Jamie, for setting it up with um, the employees. And thanks, Karen, for pushing for it. Um, so we'll move on to the uh, new hires and resignations. So the only um, official new hire that we have at this point, I know there's a bunch of interviewees in the pipeline for me to interview, um, is that um, Kendra Cole who has uh, served us in multiple ways um, over the last two years as a sub, has officially decided that she's willing to commit to the district for next year. Um, and we think maybe a little longer than that possibly too, but we've been on the search for an administrative assistant at Royalton for quite some time. Um, and Kendra has been filling in, uh, in an admirable way all year as a sub, but not wanting to apply thinking that she um, may be leaving the states. And so uh, Kendra is going to be joining us as an administrative assistant, assistant for the remainder of this year and next. Um, so we're happy about that. Um, and then we did have a resignation um, in the front office because um, we had hired someone as administrative assistant and they had have um, decided to leave the state. Andrew or Reed, do you wanna just talk about that? Yeah, so this is a employee who um, was connected to the law school and for personal reasons has had a, a change in uh, plans. Uh, so she's moving in a week, week and a half. Uh, but uh, we've got a plan to have her work remotely to help us uh, keep up with office uh, jobs uh, through the end of the year while we try to find her replacement.
So that's what we got. And then I know, um, Andrew, if you want to just discuss, I haven't interviewed candidates yet, but we will definitely have some candidates coming forward um, for next month around filling some elementary positions. And do you just want to talk about where you're at in the hiring process for a few of those? Yep, so we've had a hiring committee working on filling a uh, preschool position. Um, I believe that candidates that I need to be interviewing with Superintendent Kanarni this upcoming week. Uh, we've been interviewing for a couple different elementary positions. Um, I have a candidate coming to visit this week. She's on vacation, so she's coming from New York City to come visit the school and give her our tour. Um, and while she's here, she's going to meet with the superintendent as well. We have another candidate that's coming to do a model lesson on Monday. So lots, lots of um, meeting and greeting and getting to know people and seeing if they're the right fit for us and we're the right fit for them. So more to come on that. All right. Okay, thanks for the update. Um, do we have any more public comments? All right, then um, our next meeting date is going to be Tuesday, May 17th at 6 p.m. on the Royalton campus. Um, and I think we've finished our agenda. Have a great Thanks. rest of break, everybody. I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All right, thanks, everybody.